Hey, how y'all doing out there in YouTube land? This is the letter coming at you from the wild, wild west. And today, yes, today, yes, we have an unboxing. And from what's on the table, I think you can sort of guess what might be coming up. Here we go. And this one's coming from, I do believe this was White Mountain Knives, I think. I'm not exactly sure. But that's where it's coming from, I think. Let's go ahead and open this up. Let's see what we got. What are we going to open up today with? Let's do it with the Chevalier. I think that's the way you're supposed to pronounce this. I'm not sure. Chevalier. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Chevalier. The one that I'm calling the Chevy. The Chevalier. Okay, here we go. Something else to do over here on the sides. There we go. All right, so BB time. No receipt or nothing in there. I'm pretty sure it's White Mountain Knives where it came from. Which end do we want to open? Oh, by the way, this is Chevalier. It's my second Chevalier. And it's the model C2002-1. Black G10 handles. Black G10 handles. That's the reason why I wanted to get this one, because I wanted to see what the G10 looked like. As you guys probably could tell, I, I really like the Micarta. I like Savivi's Micarta. Okay. We've all seen all the pouch stuff, so I'm just going to fly through that and just go straight to the knife. That's nice. I like it already. It looks really nice. Savivi makes really good knives. Savivi, we, the butt. Whereas, like, um, Artisan, their budget line is not as nice as Savivi's budget line, if you ask me. I think the Savivi budget line is, is, is really like a premium line. They make very nice knives for budget knives. Perhaps some of the better ones. Now, I hate to say the best because there's so many companies. And it's all about preference when it comes down to it. But definitely they make some of the best budget knives. No doubt. Perfectly centered. Like every Savivi knife I've ever received, I received it perfectly centered. Perfectly centered. The fit and finish is always perfect. So that that tells me that they got very good quality control at this at where they make these Savivis. Very good quality show uh, control. And they got the machining process and everything else is very good. And also this one, I repolished. Because I wanted to make it a polished Damascus knife. Because I love the way Damascus looks when it's polished. Also, you know, I, I know, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got my light. I'm trying it out. Y'all let me know if it's, if it's bright enough for everybody, for it's too bright. It feels kind of bright on me right now. <laughs> but we're trying it out. I'm, I'm, this is the first time I'm using it, so y'all let me know how, how well it worked out. Because I, I know I always get complaints about my videos are dark. And I need to invest in some better equipment. And this is the beginning of it. This, this is a light that I have. But anyway, here we go. Perfect. And these Chevaliers, they have excellent detent. Excellent detent. There's no play or nothing in it. In it, in it. I'm, I'm looking for play. There's no play. It's a very solid feeling folder. This one's got a little bit of block, um, button stick, just like the other two that the other two new ones I've, I've received. They both had button stick, but it's not bad. It just feels like it's engaging on the back of the um, the blade tang. 
It's like, a, it's like a real tight fit, and there's no blade play up and down, side to side, in any of mine. And, and uh, this one, this one, this one, the Purple Rain, that was the first one I received. You all know about that one. And this one, the second one, or I can't remember if it was the second or third, but it was the second one I decided to carry, because I think I got these two together. And uh, this, th these are cogents, and this cogent is the one I carry the most. No blade play up and down or nothing. And no button stick. See, no button stick on this one. And the cogents have excellent detent also. For those of you that like excellent detent. No button stick on this one. Excellent knives. Same thing with this one. All my cogents, none of them have button stick. Now, I got the um, conspirators. Conspirators were next for me. And this was the next conspirator I got. This one doesn't have any button stick either. I don't know if you can hear that. There's nothing. It works perfect. Now, the one I got after that was this one. This is the Nitro V one. These are... These two are um, the 14C 28N Swedish Samvik steel. The the first two the, the the these two conspirators right here, the ones with the G10 handles, purple G10 and the natural JG10. This one with the Macarta has a 9CR Damascus blade. This one is Nitro V. This is the Nitro V one, and even the button stick on this one's almost gone now. Uh, Y'all remember when I first got this one that had button stick and then I did another video showing you how to get rid of the button stick The button stick on this one is pretty much virtually almost all the way gone And then I worked on this one too, but this one has 9CR also that I polished That's what 9CR looks like when you polish it Polished it with wet sandpaper first and then I went over then I just buffed it. I buffed the mess out of it I very lightly polished it with wet sandpaper. I started with like a thousand grit and went up to 2500 grit, polishing it very lightly, not putting a whole lot of pressure on the blade at all. I was just trying to get the black off. I was just basically just trying to, you know, remove the black. And then after I did that, I polished it. And then after I polished it, I resharpened it. And this is to a 20 degree blade angle or edge angle, V grind edge angle on my work sharp. And now it is razor sharp it is razor sharp this is a, this is probably the sharpest one out of all these knives the nitro v1 came naturally this one this one came very 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 sharp the next up one that i got this is this is a i know I, I said in the video i mistakenly said called this a nitro v this is not nitro v this one's a 14c 28 n blade the chef the chevaliers the chevaliers are um either 14c 28 n None of them are Nitro V. None of the Chevaliers are Nitro V. They're either 14C28N or the 9CR, Damascus. And this one, the button stick is just about all gone on this one too. Remember, it was really bad at the beginning. It's just about all gone. So, basically, you know, you can, you can. What I did, what I did on these, what I did on uh, these two was I. Let me put them down like this so they're easier to understand. And talk about. What I did on these two is I disassembled them and lubed them up. You know, did my did my tune and lube, and then just put them back together. That's all I did. I did my you know tune and lube. You know, uh, used my Militech one grease and Militech one oil and cleaned everything up. Didn't sand anything or do anything like that. Just lubed them, and basically pretty much took out almost all the button stick. There's still a tiny bit left in there but so what you know what i mean it's not that it's not it's not a big deal or anything like that this is my new chevalier absolutely love it i like the g10 if y'all been wondering about the g10 handles they're beautiful and now i think i'm gonna get one more because i want to get i want to get one with the wood handle i only want one with the wood handle because i'm not a big fan of wood handles I really like the G10 and the Macarta over wood, but I just want a wood one because I don't have a wood one. <laughs> and so I think I'm going to either, 
I might, I might get, it, I might get it in the Chevalier because I, I sort of want to get Damascus Chevalier. I got Damascus Cogent and Damascus Conspirator, but I don't have a Damascus Chevalier. And if I do that, then I'll probably get the, the Damascus, and I'll probably get the Black Micarta um, Conspirator. And then I'll be done with my collection for these. There's really like two more I want to get. Y'all know I like to have the variety and everything like that. I like to have one of each model or whatever. But I really like these. And usually, and, and usually when you see me really like a knife, I will get two or three of them of that model. Why? Because later down the road, I might end up selling one or whatever, but they'll always have one for me. And out of the two or three, I'll probably only use one of them. Like for this, like these, I don't know, I've been carrying both of these, though. This one I like to carry in my jacket pocket. I didn't put a pocket clip, I took the pocket clip off of this one because I like, it. I like these handles best without the pocket clip. I'm being honest. The pocket clip is cool. You know, it's necessary if you want to carry it in your front right pocket. For me, it is anyway, because I like to carry things in my front right pocket on a pocket clip. But it, I can feel it in my hand. It's not my favorite pocket clip. I'm just being blunt. I like the way it's deep carry and all that. I just think it could be made a little bit better. Or put, put a little bit more thought into it. I think they could do a better job with the pocket clip. But the knife itself, these are beautiful knives. I think these are the best button locks under $100. I'm keeping it real. I don't think they can get a better button lock for under $100. I know the Kaisers are really nice, but Kaiser doesn't make models I really care for. The, the only one that I would really like to have would be the one, I think it's a, a White Mountain Knives exclusive, the, the Beg Lighter, the XL, XL Beg Lighter. I've been wanting to get one of those, but you can't find them anywhere. Because I like the Kaiser Swag. I like the Kaiser Swag, but the knife is too small, but the the way it functions and, and fit and finish is beautiful. But the knife is too small. I These are like the smallest knives I really like are like three and a half inch blade for most knives. Some knives they, they make a, a three inch blade like um, like Andrew Demko's AD 20.5 or the, the Saad Kiku. Those knives with the three inch blade are perfectly fine because the handles fit my hand. And that's the main reason why I don't like knives smaller than a three and a half inch blade is because usually the handles don't fit my hand. It doesn't really have to do with the blade length because I like three inch blades too. I don't have a problem with three inch blades. Three and a, three inch, three and a half inch blades, you know, or three and a quarter inch blades. I like all those for, you know, small everyday work knives. Yeah, but they have to have a handle that fits my hand. If, it, if the handle doesn't fit my hand, then that doesn't work for me. Simple as that. Absolutely love these. I highly, 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 highly recommend the Civivi button locks, the plunge locks. I'm not talking about the Elementum. The Elementum's not a plunge lock. The Elementum's like a liner lock with a button, with a button, um, with a, you know, you have to operate it through the button that, that pushes on the um, liner lock or whatever. That I don't really care for. The, the plunge lock, a real plunge lock, uh, plunge locks are the same type of locks that they use on, was it Protex and and uh, Hogs and Brian Ty and Friends. Those are all my other plunge lock knives. And the Kaiser Swag, I, I love them. I love plunge locks. I know they're not the strongest lock in the world, but I just love the way they operate. And then when you match them up with a, um, made them up with a, um, a flipper, and the flipper protects your finger, even if the plunge lock was to give out. It makes it perfectly safe to me. And I absolutely love them. Plunge locks, most plunge locks are, are in your automatics. Most of your automatic knives use, especially the American made ones, use plunge locks. So it's a very common lock that's been around for a long time. But is it one of the strongest locks? No. I would put more at the level like at a um, like a frame lock or a, a or a liner lock. They're all about the same to me, as far as like lock strength is concerned. Plunge locks, frame locks, and liner locks are all about the same because they only cover like a partial partial portion of the blade tang, as opposed to covering the entire blade tang. Let me see if I can find one that that you can see really well.
And like the and like the Civivis, they cover like a, a very almost half. I'd say almost fifty percent of the blade tank, which makes them very nice as as opposed to like some other brands. You know, some some of our favorite American brands, they barely cover any of the blade tang, and I, that that sort of rubs me the wrong way because I know that if push comes to shove and and something was to hit the backside of this this blade, that it might fail it might fail because it, it might slide off that blade tang. These are excellent knives. I think the Civivi button locks, plunge locks are very 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 good it's a very you're, you're getting a very good value for your dollar and anybody that that gets one of these I, I know that they're going to be happy with them if you want to if you want a nice fidgeting knife and um a knife that's fun to use i recommend the cvv button locks these are great knives for everyday carry and they make the altus which is like a three inch blade but Again, that one, the handle is too small, and that's not one of my favorites. But I do like the way it functions. I think it's a great knife, but it doesn't have a flipper also, so that's not one I'm going to carry. I just collected it. But these are awesome knives. Highly recommend these. This is a G10. This one's Purple Rain. I nicknamed this one Purple Rain. This was the very first one I got. This was the one that turned me on to Civivi button locks. Prior to this one, I never had a Civivi button lock. This was the first. The Alpha. This is the Alpha. Haven't gotten to the Omega yet, but this is the Alpha. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Then... This one, I like this one too. I, I like Jade. I like the natural Jade G10. A lot of people like these because they like to dye them, but I like it the way it looks, just the way it looks, you know, without being dyed. I like this the, the natural Jade G10. It's different from having all the dark handle materials, and it's very well done. It's beautiful. Nothing short of beautiful. These are my cogents. I'm, first ones I'm showing you. And this is the Micarta. I love the Civivi Micarta. I just love the way Micarta feels. And this is, a, I think, I'm pretty sure this is a canvas Micarta. I think this, the Micarta that Civivi uses is a canvas Micarta. It's not a linen Micarta. Because I have a knife with a linen Micarta handle. It's, it's a lot, the, the weave and the, and the material that they're using that you can see is a lot finer. So you know, you almost can't even see it. But on canvas, you can start to see it like this. I think this is canvas micarta. Excellent knife. And the detent on these is perfect. The detent on these is perfect. I'm trying to fail it. The only one I can fail is the, is the conspirator. But, I got something to tell you about that. This one doesn't fail anymore now I don't know if it has to do with me polishing the blade tang because this one this one was completely taken apart and I totally polished it the entire because you can see I it polished everything polished the entire blade tang I don't know if you can see inside there but even you know even the the parts that are exposed everything was polished on this knife on the on the blade and this one doesn't, this one doesn't, it's hard to fail it. Push this off. Before I was able to fail it. It doesn't like to fail no more. Now I don't know what that is. I don't know, maybe it's because like, I took some of the finish off of it or something. That it, it just functions better and it's solid. Solid as a rock. Solid as a rock. Absolutely love it. Now I didn't sand off metal really on this. I just took off the finish. I just, that's all I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to change the shape of the blade or anything like that. I was just taking off the finish. And so I used very light, um, I didn't use um, wet sandpaper that's made for removing material. I used wet sandpaper that was made for polishing. And that's like, and it starts like, polishing wet sandpaper starts to me around 1,000 grit. And you go to 1,000 grit wet sandpaper, then you go to 1,500 grit wet sandpaper, then you go to 2,000 grit wet sandpaper, then you go to 2,500 grit wet sandpaper. That's what I did on this. 
That's why I always do on all the knives that you see that I polish. I, I polish them the same way. And so this one functions even better when it's polished. So I don't know if the, the black coating or something like that slows it down a little bit or something. But you can see I polished the entire, entire blade. And you know what's neat about Damascus when you polish it? Even on the edge, where, where I reprofiled the edge, you can still see the Damascus lines. So this is real, real Damascus. This is not bullshit Damascus. This is real Damascus. So Vivi's making real Damascus blades. And it's 9CR, which is supposed to be equivalent to, from what my understanding, it's like a 440C equivalent, 9CR. So that's what this is. And it sharpens up beautifully. And I always loved 440C. Back in the day, 440C was a premium stainless steel. You know, in the 80s and 90s, 440C was a stainless steel that you wanted. I have a lot of Benchmade ballast songs with 440C on it. 440C blades. That was, a, that was one of the popular stainless steels that Benchmade used to use. And the heat treat on this must be really good because this blade is razor sharp now. I mean, it's like super, super sharp. If it touches you, it could probably cut you. And let me show you the, what I'm talking about, like the polishing. See, you can see. Probably a Damascus blade would be better showing you, huh? Because this one was pretty much the same finish as this one. And you can see where I polished on here. Everywhere. These are both Damas 9CR Damascus Civivi blades. And I'm only going to polish this one because this is my favorite one. <laughs> I like the Conspirator the best. I'm going to be blind. I just like the Conspirator the best. And this one and this one have been getting the most pocket time. My two Conspirators. And then after the Conspirator, I have been carrying this one a lot. This one went, went to work with me today. Went to work with me today and yesterday. Because I was eating salami. Salami and cheese and crackers at work. And this is an excellent slicer. This one's excellent for slicing. For slicing up a... Uh, Things like salami and cheese or whatever, you know, it's excellent for that. All these Civivis have real thin blades, blade stocks. It's, it's a, a three millimeter blade stock for all of these. And they all have three and a half inch blades. Excellent knives. Excellent knives. Excellent knives. And this one is the baby of the bunch. And I will be taking this one apart because it does have a lot of blade stick. It will need a tune and loop. I probably won't make a video about it because I've already made a video about it before. But yep, y'all can hear that. I love the Chevaliers though. To me, the Chevalier is like a perfect work knife. Why? Because it's got the sheep's foot blade. And why did I say it's a perfect knife? Because it has a sheep's foot blade? Because to me, a perfect knife for work if you work around other people or work with other people, it's a knife that's not threatening, but can do all your cutting tasks that you need it to do. And the Chevalier is excellent for opening up letters, boxes, um, you know, doing doing some food prep. It's, this is a great, this is just a great working blade. It's not, I, I, I would say it's not a great self-defense blade though. It's not my self-defense choice. It'd be probably one of my last choices for a self-defense blade. Well, not the last maybe, but I, there's lots of other types of blades I would pick over this for a self-defense type blade. But as far as a work blade is concerned, this might be one of my first choices. I love the Chevalier. I love the sheep's foot blades. And what, what, what I learned I really like the sheep's foot blade is when I got the 8020s. 8020.5 and the 8020S. Those knives with the shark's foot, a.k.a. sheep's foot. Shark's foot, a.k.a. sheep's foot. Is an excellent blade too for work. Non-threatening. People see it, they don't get scared or whatever. They don't they don't freak out or get a little shocked or whatever. They just see a pocket knife that's meant for utility purposes. I don't think anybody would consider this a threatening knife unless you're trying to you know trying to do something to somebody. But if you just put up your, this out your pocket at the you know the, at the post office to open up your letters or something, nobody's gonna freak out when they see this. At least I wouldn't. You know, it doesn't look, 
But then again, that's me though. I'm a knife person, so maybe I wouldn't freak out. <laughs> but uh, I think even non-knife people aren't going to freak out when they see that. Absolutely love it. Highly recommend the Civivis. Well, that's going to be it for the, today. It was just a little quick video. I just want to do a little quick opening, box opening, and let you all see my Chevalier, my new Chevalier with the 14C28M Swedish Sandvik steel and, uh, and my 9CR, 9CR Damascus and Nitro V Conspirators and my Cogents. My first loves were the Cogents. First loves were the Cogents. Purple Rain was my first love. Purple Rain. Purple Rain. And then and then the Damascus. I love the Damascus. I love the Civivi Damascus. And it sharpens up very well. It wasn't hard to sharpen. I used the Work Sharp. And the Work Sharp has three choices of stones. I think one is it. Was it 320? A 320 diamond stone or something like that? The next one up is like an 800, and the next one up is, I don't know what, the, it's, a, it's a polishing stone. I'm not exactly sure what the grid is. But that's all I used on it. I didn't use anything else. And I, you know, set, set the angle at 20 degrees and polish and sharpen this, and the edge is awesome. That's all I got to say. It sharpened very, the steel sharpens very well. And that was over a week ago, and I haven't had to resharpen it, and it's been carried and used a lot. So it's holding its edge, too. Let you guys look at the edge. No dents, dings, or anything in that edge. So I would say the 9CR, you know, is, is a decent steel. Now, how well compare, you know, will it do 250 cuts or something? I don't know about all that. But, you know, for everyday use, it's perfect. I never, I never cut anything 250 times, 350 times anyway, so that doesn't really matter to me. It is nice to know that it can do that if it can. <laughs> but I don't know how many cuts this would do. It'd probably be around the same amount of cuts as maybe like a 440C or something like that. But it does hold the edge very nicely. So I would recommend the 9CR. I've heard people say bad things about, about um, budget steels that have budget, uh, what they call budget Damascus made with um, 9CR or whatever. I have no complaints. It, it, it was easy to resharpen. Well, you know, not as easy like, um, it wasn't Oz 8 easy. It wasn't like that. But it was more like, um, it was easier than D2, put it that way. It was easier than D2, about the same as the 1428C. 14, 14, was it 14? C, uh, 14 in, 14N28C, in whatever. <laughs> the Swedish steel. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But it's a great steel. Let's see how much this one weighs real quick. I want to see if it just weighs the same as the others. I think it's supposed to weigh 3.2. 3.5. We got 3.5. Let's see how much this one weighs. 3.2. That's where I got the 3.2 from. The Micarta version weighs 3.2. The G10 version is a little bit heavier than the Micarta's, 3.5. Can I tell the difference? No, not really. I guess this one feels slightly heavier. Maybe it's because I know it's slightly heavier too, though. It might be a mental thing. Yeah, this one does feel slightly heavier. This one feels a little bit lighter. But 3.5 ounces is nothing to me. To, to me, my favorite weight's... The carry for a knife is like in between 3.5 and 4.5 ounces. Yeah, I'm going to take this one apart. This one actually has a little bit more button stick than the other ones did, I think. Because I'm actually having to push hard on the button. There and that's perfect. And I know, I know how to take care of that, so I'm not even tripping on it. These have excellent detent, excellent knife. I can't remember what I paid for it. I want to say $69 or something. I think it was like 69 bucks at White Mountain Knives. And then you have a 10% debt discount. I use Love Them Knives discount. Love Them Knives discount at White Mountain Knives. 
<laughs> Get your 10% discount. So it's actually even cheaper than that. Absolutely love it. I might go back to White Mountain Knives and get the other two that I want. If they still have them. I, I do want to get a wooden one just for my collection. I'm, I'm not going to carry the wooden one. I'm being honest. It's not one that I really want to, I want to carry. I just want to have it in my collection so I have all the different types of handle materials. And I bet you I'm going to get the the wooden chevalier, no, chevalier, chevalier. Am I saying it right? Che or chevalier, chevalier, chevalier. Love it. Well, that's all I got for you right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one out for you guys today, so y'all can go ahead and check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Peace, stiletto. <laughs>